Greetings, everyone. On this, the evening of our second CAHOOTS Summertime event. My name is Tanisha Tate. I am the Artistic Director of CAHOOTS Theater and welcome all to Signs of the Times. I'd like to introduce you now to my co-leader, CAHOOTS Managing Producer, Lisa Alves. Hello, everyone. I'm just also doing spotlighting at the moment. <laughs> so let me just organize myself. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Before I pass it off to our host for the evening, I want to go over some access notes and a land acknowledgement. So this evening, uh, we have auto captions powered by Rev AI, as well as a transcript, which you can access by clicking the link or the CC icon at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar and choosing captions or transcript. This event also has ASL to English interpretation by Kimberly Johnson and Tara Everett, which you can see Kimberly right there. If you experience any technical difficulties, please message me in the Zoom chat by searching my name, Lisa Alves. And if you get disconnected at any time, please click the original Zoom link that brought you here. We are recording tonight's show and it will be posted on YouTube later next week. So please keep your videos and microphones off for the duration of the evening. Uh, in the chat, I'm going to be sharing the program for the evening in a PDF and in a Google Docs form. This was also emailed to you uh, prior to the event, so you should also have that in your inbox. Now, before we begin tonight's event, I want to acknowledge the land we find ourselves on. As a child of Portuguese immigrants, I am grateful to be living on this land as a queer white woman. I know my life has benefited from the history of white supremacy and colonialism. It is my duty to continue to learn about the original caretakers of this land and to unlearn the systems of, of oppression that brought me privilege, unlike my black, indigenous, Latin, Asian, and brown friends and peers who may also find themselves at the intersections of other identities. I'd like to acknowledge that Cahoots Theater operates on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Wendat, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. These, this land is known by many names, such as Treaty 13 Territory and Dugaranto which is a word from the Mohawk meaning trees standing in the water. Dugaranto has <clears throat> always been a meeting place because of how the waterways intersect. And there are many buried rivers under the city's current infrastructure. Cahoots is within the Wampum Belt Covenant, which is the dish with one spoon territory. And this is an agreement between the caretakers of the shared territories and hunting grounds. I am currently working on the land of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation in the head of the Lake Purchase and Treaty 22 and 23 territories. And this is also known as Mississauga, Ontario. I urge you to take a look at the land you are on and question the names of institutions, streets, and landmarks because we are entrenched in an upholding history that really doesn't benefit anyone except a few. I would also encourage you to learn about the history of the residential schools and to consider donating to the Indian Residential School Survivor Society, especially tomorrow on July 1st. I am sharing the link in the chat for everyone to take a look. Another 182 unmarked graves were found today at the site of a former residential school in Cranbrook, BC. This is on top of the thousands of others found this month. I am adding a to the chat uh, a number of actionable items for truth and reconciliation that you can go over today 
tomorrow and onward so that we can actually live in truth and reconciliation. I personally urge you all to make July 1st a day of learning, talking, and reflecting on the long history of Indigenous peoples on Turtle Island and how the central idea of Canada exists in blatant opposition to the reality of Indigenous peoples. We at Cahoots recognize that we are all treaty people. We also recognize the ongoing stewardship and how together we can be part of the collective responsibility to share the territory, protect the land, and protect the communities we are a part of. Thank you. Now, I would like to introduce to you the host for the night, Catherine J. McKinnon. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Kat, for being our host today. Um, I'm going to give you a little introduction before I spotlight you. Kat is an award-winning filmmaker and performer known for her documentaries, film work, and television work. You may have seen her in Murdoch Mysteries, Kenny versus Spenny on TV, and you may have also seen her in The Enchanted Loom when she was not working as an ASL coach. She is also our deaf artist and theater's toolkit community consultant. We truly love working with her. Please welcome Kat. Woot! I'm just gonna bring Kat on. I have to search for her in my... <laughs> Thank you, Kat. Here we go. Thank you. The floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. This is my name sign, Catherine McKinnon. Welcome to Cahoots Theater's dynamic performance showcase called Sign of the Times. The purpose of celebrating deaf artists across Canada is our goal tonight. We have six amazing performers And before we get started with our program, I wanna recognize that I'm here on the land of the Mississaugas of Credit in Mississauga, Canada. I wanna tell you a little bit about how Sign of the Times came to be. And going back a month ago, Tanisha Tate, who is the artistic director of Cahoots Theater. She and Lisa Elves hosted an appreciation night of different talent. Some of it was spoken, some of it was singing. Tanisha got inspired from the appreciation night and thought, why don't we have host a night showcasing deaf artists and their, their amazing talents. And that's what brings us all together tonight to celebrate Sign of the Times. We have performances tonight by Jordan, by Durga, Gaytree, Chris, and Tamika. And I'll be performing as well. You know, we often wonder how did the pandemic impact deaf artists across Canada? And definitely there has been impacts. And now that we're slowly, slowly, slowly reopening, what does that mean exactly for deaf artists in theater? Are we thriving or are we still struggling? We're facing challenges of live performances on Zoom, just like we're doing tonight versus live stage performances. Of course, with Zoom, we feel somewhat limited. On stage, we're able to move around freely as ASL incorporates body language, visual vernacular. We have that freedom on the stage. With Zoom, 
we have the limitations of our screen. Zoom is great for ASL poetry, signed music, and other such things. It's kind of like an experimental process, if you will. And in the past year, I've seen many, many performances on Zoom, and it's been absolutely wonderful. You know, and showcasing work, a round of applause to all the deaf artists from, from across Canada. Tonight, we're thankful for the technology that brings us all together. Some of you might look back to olden days when we had TTY machines, the teletypewriter that made that loud noise that drove some of our hearing parents absolutely crazy. And some of you may even remember AOL texting. <laughs> Times have certainly changed. I mean, so many things have changed. And again, that's what brings us here tonight with the theme of our show, Signs of the Times. COVID had a huge impact on all of us. Definitely, it had some pros and it definitely had some cons. We came to, we're coming together tonight to tell our stories in our own language, in ASL. The big question, the big question on all of our minds is when will live theater be back? When can we be on the stages again? It's possible it won't be until fall of 2022. But that's not going to stop us from creating. Nothing will stop us. There's so many fine, talented, deaf and hard of hearing artists here in Canada. Thank you to Tanisha and Lisa for the Indigenous Land Acknowledgement our collective hearts break for our friends, Indigenous deaf people and artists across Canada today as well. I hope tonight will open your eyes and you will have a feast for your eyes to absorb and take in. And for some of you, your ears through the spoken English interpretation, for all of your eyes to absorb, take in, and inspire you. A thanks to our interpreters, Kimberly and Tara. Thanks to both of them. Tonight's showcase will feature something called, we sign it like BV, which refers to It's visual vernacular. It's a unique physical theater technique, which includes elements of poetry, mime, primarily performed by deaf artists. This powerful storytelling style combines strong movements, ASL signs, along with gestures and facial expressions to capture the new world and in all its visual complexity. Tonight is all about the spirit and essence of our performers, Indigenous, Black, people of color. It's a tip of the hat to Pride Month and a recognition of LGBT community members to celebrate the fabulous diversity in our theater and deaf community. Without further ado, we begin this evening's showcase, our first performer up, and I will give a brief bio. The first performer is Chris Dodd. Chris is an Edmonton-based performing artist. He's a performing artist as well as an accessibility advocate. He's also was a finalist of the Governor General Innovation Award. 
He is the founder and artistic director of Sound Off, Canada's national theater festival dedicated to the deaf performing arts. Chris will be performing tonight from his original piece entitled From Behind the Shield. Please give a warm welcome to Chris Dodd. Over to you, Chris. This is a story of love and of isolation, but mostly it is about love. When it all started back in March, I wasn't really worried. I mean, I was doing okay. I had a decent job and I was able to work from home. I was working with BDO Canada as an accountant. Myself and my roommate, Abel, hunkered down in our apartment, and we made the best of it. In spite of whatever danger, in spite of whatever danger was outside our door, myself and Abel enjoyed the freedom to do whatever the hell we wanted. However, that did not last. After a few weeks, I got laid off. While this was happening, the whole world ended. Now, I don't mean that as a figure of speech. I mean it was the literal biblical fire and brimstone destruction of the world. Or anyways, the world as we all knew it. It was around this time that Abel moved out to live with his girlfriend. So that left me alone in the apartment with everything remotely fun or engaging shut down. No job, no plan, no future. I couldn't see my family because my mom was immunocompromised and I didn't want to risk infecting her. I couldn't see my deaf friends either, so that limited us to video calls. But it was never the same speaking to a two-dimensional image as it was in person. The only chance I had to get out into the real world and have a real social interaction was that when I went to my local Sobeys. And that's where I met Mari. Mari worked as a cashier. She's a little bit younger than me with shoulder length, shimmering red hair. And she had this vibrant artistic style that her green work apron couldn't hide. But the best feature of Mari was her smile. When she smiled, it was like the warmth that hits your body when the first rays of sun break in the morning. I had her as my cashier a couple of times, but never told her that I was deaf. I'm pretty good at faking being a hearing person. And I thought I was doing pretty good. Then the following week, she was my cashier again. Suddenly, while in the middle of bagging grapes, she stopped and waved her hand to get my attention. Looking me right in the eyes, she carefully brought her finger up to her ear, then down to her chin, and then she pointed right at me. <laughs> oh, I can't help but smile. I respond, yes, I am deaf. It turned out that she suspected right away the first time she met me. She then went online and learned a few signs, but was too shy to try them on out until now. From then on, whenever I went shopping, I always looked for Mari. If she was working, 
I would line up at her till and patiently wait for my turn. Often Mari would see me at the back of the line and she would start beaming her smile and signing with me across the distance. A couple of times this got her in trouble because she was distracted and she scanned through a few items twice. Each time we met, I would teach her some new signs and she would show me a few that she had learned online. One day I went into the store and found that everything had changed. They had set up arrows everywhere to shuttle people around the store. When I arrived at Mari's till, I found they had set up a plexiglass barrier. Attached to the barrier is a sign that says, please remain behind the shield. Mari had disposable gloves on and was wiping down the conveyor belt with these strong smelling wipes. She was wearing a mask. I am pretty sure she was smiling, but her eyes looked tired, so I don't know. She showed me a few new signs, but without her lip movements and her expressions, it was hard to understand her. Although I mostly understood her with the mask, it wasn't really the same without her smile. I know it's there. But it's like when a cloud moves in and blots out the sun on a warm summer's day. Maury said she was going on a break in 10 minutes and to meet her outside at the picnic tables. When we met outside, she looked even more radiant in the summer sun. And for the first time, I noticed the freckles on her cheeks. After chatting for 15 minutes, she put her mask back on and turned to me and signed very slowly. Just so you know, next week, you will need to wear a mask. Before she went back inside, she took a scrap of paper out of her apron and wrote down her number. She asked me to send her the link to the ASL website I had mentioned. And then with a wink, she was gone. <sighs> Once Mari and I started texting, I stopped needing to go there every day, <laughs> which was actually a relief since I really didn't need more groceries at the time. <laughs> but also a relief because Mari was now not just an acquaintance, but a friend. In the evenings after she finished her shift, sometimes we would text for hours. The connection I had with Mari was intense and immediate. This made me realize that I wanted to spend my time with someone who at least I could partially understand, mask or no mask. If communication was difficult before with lip reading, the use of masks made it impossible. It was no longer practical to fake being hearing. Every interaction with any person wearing a mask always resulted in the same thing, a failure to communicate. Mari and I had become very close in a short amount of time. And I was determined to ask her if she would go out with me. However, this was the kind of thing I needed to do in person. We had arranged to have lunch on Wednesday at her work. This was it. I was ready to ask her out. But when I went in on Wednesday, Maria was, Marie was nowhere to be found. I checked everywhere, even outside at the picnic tables, but Mari was not there. While I was looking around the store, I saw the manager. I approached him and started speaking. However, with my mask on, my deaf voice felt muted and I needed to repeat myself several times before he understood me. 
The manager was also wearing a mask, so I couldn't understand him either. Finally, he pulled out his phone and he typed it and showed me the screen. Mari is not working. She is sick. I text Mari again that evening, hoping to hear from her. I wanted some kind of reassurance. Was it just a cold, the flu, or something worse? Was she all right? The next morning, I asked Abel to call her for me. He texted me back saying her voice just rings once and then goes straight to voicemail. The worst part is, aside from texting, I had no other way of contacting her. I didn't even know her last name and I never met any of her friends. I thought about going back to the store and speaking with the manager, but I knew he wouldn't give me her information. Is she in the hospital? Is she alone? Is her family there with her? All through the week, I continued to text her and each time there was only silence. I'm left alone in my apartment with only my own thoughts. The days seem to blend together. Without a job or a purpose, time becomes irrelevant. Is it Monday or is it Wednesday? Does it really matter? I was lost, alone, and without purpose. Wow, Chris. Thank you, Chris, for that wonderfully beautiful performance. Thank you so much. It was very powerful. Round of applause. For our next performance, our second performa, is Durga Kanagais Karam Pillai. This is her name sign. Durga is a deaf Tamil queer artist. She has worked both as a deaf interpreter and ASL performer with Cahoots Theater and Red Dress Production. Durga is also known as an actress and is one of the three founders of Deafies Unique Time.
Her first performance piece is called Jaw, and the second one is called Be a River. And over to you, Durga. All around me, people are chewing air. After a while, it hurts the eyes. They do it in pairs and in groups, but most alone hand to air, on the bus, in the street, on the train, in shops. What can be so important? What is happening that demands this constant Is it something I don't know? Is the world ending? Have they just discovered the meaning of life and have to share it with everyone they know before they forget? They are eating the planet, gobbling it up. There will be nothing left by the huge mouth, grotesque, masticating. Mouths are for kissing, right? Ugh. Be a river. The river does not stop. It finds its way. A card through stone, through rock. It always finds a way to flow on. At times it is a trickle at others wide and broad and it is never ending and it will not stop. Do you like water? Do you like a river? You dip a bowl into the river and the river fills it and becomes the bowl. Pour it into a pot, it becomes the pot. Treat with fire 
and it becomes steam. It becomes soup. This is how you will be unstoppable. Fluid, powerful, malleable, but independent. Following your own route, your own way from source until you reach and merge with the sea. Wow, Durga, that was so incredibly beautiful. Thank you for sharing your amazing talent and two very beautiful poems. So our third performer tonight is Jordan Sangalong, name sign like this. He was taken under the wing of hot thespian action, Shannon Guile, took flight with 100 decibels in the summer of 2014. It's Winnipeg, by the way. Jordan made his performing debut during high school in Florida. When he was a little younger, he was all over the state signing his songs. Please give a warm welcome to Jordan. Over to you, Jordan. This performance piece will be done in the style of visual vernacular, and the theme is about a deaf parent and a deaf child and their journey with their deaf experience.
Oh, Jordan, that was absolutely incredible. Thank you for sharing the visual vernacular style with us, style of performing. It was incredible. Next up, our performer is Tamika Bullen. Name sign Tamika. Tamika has been involved in social services for women, immigrants, youth, and the LGBT community for many years. She became involved in the theatrical world uh, as an ASL poetry performer in 2015. She will be performing tonight, poem and a story. The poem is called A Single Rose. And the second piece will be a story. Please give a warm welcome to Tamika. Over to you, Tamika. Hello, everybody. I have one poem to share with you tonight. And then after that, I have a story to tell. Delicate as it is. Fragrance drifts away. Leaves me an earthy smell. I sniff, remember the perfume my mom applied on her silky skin. Under the mahogany silk cotton tree was our home. Birds from the branches chant. Buttress roots grow underground to the Atlantic Ocean, to where we lost our family. We grow more roses. We dance merrily. get drunk by rum. Puff some fine cigars. We make a new family. So now I want to tell you the real story behind the mahogany silk cotton tree featured in my poem. In the Caribbean, there are a number of stories circulating about silk cotton trees. So I'm just going to share a few of these stories about silk cotton trees. In Trinidad and Tobago, an African witch by the name of Gang Gang, Sarah, had a dream of going back to Africa. So she scaled a silk cotton tree and ate it. When she tried to fly, she lost her ability to fly because she, and died. And that's because she ate too much salt and it prevented her from flying. Now moving over to Guyana, there is a story related to the mahogany silk cotton tree. A long time ago in colonial times, the Dutch colonizers had a treasure, various things buried inside. And they killed the slave who buried that treasure and then summoned him to guard the treasure even during his death. His soul had to guard the treasure in the afterlife so no one could come and steal the treasure of the colonizers. Another story about the silk cotton tree 
It's called Jumbie's tree. And the reason being is that the tree is the house for ghosts and supernatural manifestations or Jumbies. So in the village, people have to appease the tree by offering such things as rum, fine cigars, fruits, and sacrificed boughs. They place these offerings at the tree for the spirits. One time, someone from the village snuck in, took the rum and drank it, took some of the fruit offerings and ate it. And then all of a sudden, poof, he disappeared. The villagers wondered what happened to this person. They suspected the tree killed him. And the person was being punished because they stole the offerings of rum and fruit and that was his punishment. Even contractors refused to cut down the tree. People had tried to do it before and then they were cursed with maladies and death. And sometimes they lost their voice anymore. So the contractors decided to leave the tree as it is in the middle of the roadway. And that's where it stands. No one will dare cut down the tree. And it has been there ever since in the middle of the road. That's the end of my story. I hope you enjoyed it. End of performance for me. Thanks everyone. Wow, that was incredible storytelling, Tamika. And I've learned a lot of new things tonight. That was incredible. Thank you once again for sharing your talent. Our next performer is Gaytree Persaud Dunmoon. This is her name sign. Gaytree is a Toronto Indo Caribbean raised theater maker who likes to develop performances using an eclectic mix of visual and physical theater styles. Acting is the passion that Gaytree lives for. Her performance tonight is called The Galaxy Stone. Please give a warm welcome to Gaytree. Over to you. This, as you can see, is my home. I am none other than Princess Reina. If you'd like to see what my home looks like, I can let you see. This is my home. my enchanted home. I'm inviting you tonight to join me on my journey to share the struggle I have with my identity as a deaf person. I'm tired of this mask that I wear, the passing, the covering up, the striving for per perfection, the expectations from parents. I'm deaf, I'm alone. I want to get rid of this mask that I wear. I wanna take you on my journey with me and you can experience who I am as I fall in love with myself and share my identity with you.
my parents were considering arranged marriage for me with a hearing person. And I was so nervous just thinking about how we would communicate. And the expectation, would I have to use my voice with my hearing aid, struggle along with this thing, this piece, this gadget, this device, trying to take in all the spoken words, trying to take in all the words coming my way, nothing but a headache. I have to use this thing. I'm sick and tired of it. Then one night, I saw a red glow. One night I saw this glass tunnel. This is my rock. The next day was my wedding day. And I was in angst. I didn't know what to do. And I decided I was going to run away. I was going to run away with my ship. I had to go with my gut instinct. I had to find my happiness and I knew I couldn't suffer any longer. Years and years of forcing me to speak and to use my voice. My sister would always hold the microphone up and get me to speak and get me to feel the vibration. That was it. I was going to ride away. I got out my map. And I knew I was just going to do it. So I took off in my ship, in my, my spacecraft. I left. Finally, I had my freedom. I finally got to escape. When I arrived at the glass globe, the henna, the ship finally landed. And I could see this glowing light in the distance. Something was drawing me in. I opened my spacecraft and I got out. And I was in this amazing forest. I had to push my way through branches, thick, thick branches and brambles. I had to push and pull and claw my way through. And I spotted something. I couldn't figure out what it was. It was absolutely beautiful. It was stunning and glowing, this light. I wondered what could it be? I felt someone tap my shoulder. I looked over and I saw this figure making its way to me, approaching me. I'll never forget the face on the figure, absolutely stunning. This gleam, this shine that came off of this person. This person was non-binary and they said, I have something here for you. In this contains a new language. And I said, what new language? 
and this figure, this person, told me something will make a big difference to you when you are no longer alone. And just so you know, I'm deaf like you. You are here in this place called henna and you are no longer alone. And I'm going to give you the honor and designation of being Princess Raina. And I asked, how did you know my name was Raina? And the figure answered, well, I've been watching you since you came into being. And I asked, why did you make me to become deaf? And the figure answered, because I knew you were strong enough. I knew you were strong enough to support your people. My people, I asked. Yes, there's a second baby on the way, a new baby, and you will teach them everything you know about being deaf. And this baby will help lead you in your responsibilities. I was torn. Do I take on this responsibility? And I decided, yes, I would. I will accept this challenge. And this figure told me, go into the light and you'll be accepted. And the next thing I knew, something pulled at my hand. And I looked at my hands. And the figure said, use your hands, use your light. This light contains magic. And I said, what kind of magic? What do you mean? I said, magic, there will be magic in your life. Your world will brighten, your home will brighten. And with that, the figure was gone. I kept wondering what language what was this being or this figure telling me about? I kept looking at my hands and looking at the light. This was a galaxy stone. This was the magic I needed. This was the magic I was able to finally see in my hands. The magic within me. It was covered in goosebumps. And I suddenly felt so powerful. I watched my hands. My hands started to sign. My name is Raina. I found my language. I found my voice. No more hearing aids. No more hearing aids. I'm prepared. I was ready for this new baby that was on its way. At that point, I started to accept my identity as a deaf person. And I would teach that little infant to grow and become a leader. And this non-binary entity They meant ASL when they talked about my language. This was the key to my freedom. This is the key to being myself, the galaxy stone. Wow. Hey, Tree, that was absolutely powerful storytelling. Thank you for sharing your skills with us tonight and your amazing storytelling talent. All of the performers tonight have been just absolutely incredible. The last performance is going to be me. 
Catherine McKinnon. This is a, a song from a well-known show and it's a mix using signed music. And signed music is something we create through our hands and from our hearts. It's not sound-based. So it's a mix taking a song and putting it into ASL. And the title of the song is Waiting for the Light to Shine. I have lived an undirected life. A cloudy way, I know. The only way I knew. So the things I've done, in fact, each and every one, I have lived in the darkness for so long. I'm waiting for the light to shine. Beyond the dreams I've dreamed. Our light will continue to shine. No more waiting. So it is I, you, they, them, and us.
tonight was just an absolutely incredible night filled with sensational performers. My thanks to all of the performers. The purpose of that song, Waiting for the Light to Shine, is the actual reason we're all gathered here tonight. Gaytree's story, in fact, talked about light in her gal galaxy stone story. Jordan talked about inspiration, which is a form of light. Durga talked about the river and us being like a river. Tamika's poem, The Single Rose, is also about that light we have, the light that all of us have inside of us. Chris, Jordan, Durga, Gaytree, Tamika. I recognize that in all of you. I think there was so many connections and we're connected together tonight. A huge thank you to Lisa Elves, managing producer, and Tanisha Tate, artistic director. A thank you to the Cahoots Theater staff for setting up all the rehearsals and inviting all the performers. A thank you to Actra Toronto and to an absolutely fabulous community of artists gathered here this evening. To everybody who came to watch the performances. Thank you to the two interpreters, Kimberly and Tara. And remember, keep shining, keep shining your light, everybody, that's important. I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful summer and keep shining and keep celebrating together. Thank you and good night, everyone. I see there's a lot of comments in the chat from people. Wow, absolutely amazing. <laughs>